we love the music that we love for a number of reasons, the most fundamental one being evolution. When we think about music and the development of language, it goes way, way back. We often make connections between music and speech and music and language because there are commonalities. So when we listen to music, we have the sense that something's being communicated. Call me baby if you need a friend. There are two ways to think about the mechanisms around music and our appreciation for it. And the first is perception and the second is prediction. We really need to be able to perceive music before we can do anything else. And that involves a part of the brain called the auditory cortex. And so auditory perception basically involves analyzing sound patterns. And then making predictions. And this is something that we can do naturally. So we know what constitutes music. And then we use prediction to be able to tell what's coming next. A light hits the bloom on the but the interesting thing about prediction is that it's actually tied in with our reward system. So our brains want to be right. The reward pathway is activated in response to music and is really crucial in emotion. Parts of the brain, for example, the amygdala, the nucleus accumbens, the hypothalamus, the hippocampus, the insula, the cingulate cortex, all are important structures in the brain that are involved in emotion and they make up the limbic system. I'm thinking about how The amygdala is this little tiny almond-like structure deep in the brain and the amygdala helps us determine what is emotionally salient in our environment, what's important to connect to emotionally. And listening to music in general, regardless in this case of if we like it, if we don't like it, listening to music activates the amygdala. There's a sweet spot between something being somewhat predictable so it's not boring and music being predictable enough for us to have this um, resolution and satisfaction of having predicted the unfolding of the music. The second reason is that it does something with our identity. So the music we enjoy often tells us something about ourselves and it also signals to others who we want to be and, and how we want to be seen. Identity is really important, and it's why music and memory ends up being so important. Music connects powerfully to our emotional memories. Music is second only to smell and its ability to draw out a memory, and it can take us back immediately to a person, to a time, to a place. Music is universal in that all societies can identify what music is happy, sad, whether music sounds like a love song and what the function of that music is, but how we interpret it depends on what memories are associated to that music. So going back to thinking about evolution and the purpose of enjoying music and finding it pleasurable, music actually helps us to foster connections and of course connectivity is really key to our survival. Repetition seems to be a real feature of music. A song like You're Beautiful, I mean, I, I didn't count the number of times James Blunt sang that, but it's a lot. You're beautiful, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, it's true. And another song that demonstrates that characteristic of a repetition is Damien Rice's The Blower's Daughter. I can't take my eyes off of you. Can't take my eyes off of you. You have, I can't take my eyes off of you. I can't take my eyes off of you. As as part of this this lyrical, almost mantra-like repetition that's that's built into the musical love letter. The repetition signifies the significance 
of a particular melodic line. And there's something about that that is important in why we like music and why it's so sticky in our brains. It's like a tattoo in our brains that we can't get rid of. We'll both forget the breeze. We still understand pitch and rhythm and melody and tones and our brains can interpret what that means and that's common across the world which is kind of beautiful. And so it is.